Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question I'm answering is, what's in the box as regard to this very heavy board game from Stonemeyer Games called Tapestry? a civilization game that promises to have some of the most impressive board game components you've ever seen. I have not seen this game in person, I've only seen pictures online, and I am really looking forward to cracking this open to see what's in the box. And I invite you to join me for that. Before we get there though, I will point out this is a civilization game for one to five players that plays up to two hours. Designed by Jamie Stegmeyer, the owner of Stronghold Games, art by Andrew Bosley, sculpts by Rom Brown. Now, I do have to thank Jamie for sending me a review copy of this game. Now, in Tapestry, you start from nothing in advance on any of the four advancement tracks, science, technology, exploration, and military, to earn progressively better benefits. You can focus on a specific track or take a more balanced approach. You will also improve your income, build your capital city, leverage your asymmetric abilities, Earn victory points and gain tapestry cards that will tell the story of your civilization. So we're going to take this. I'm going to throw it down on the table. I'm going to tip that camera down and we're going to take a look at what's in the box. Here you have tapestry. Nice, thick, heavy box. We'll flip it over and show you the back of the box for a quick second. I don't need to focus on this because I'm about to open this up so you get to see all these awesome looking pieces right here. So we have the rules, or a summary sheet. What do we have here? This is the full rules in different languages? What do we have? Okay, this is set up and this is rules for solo play, okay. So, that, wow. Okay, I expect a big, heavy uh, a game with the word civilization in it to not have a four page rule book. Now I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but that is very short compared to what I was expecting for a civilization building game. Now that said, I love what paper this is made out of. I do not know what Jamie used. I'm gonna see if you can see the texture on this. No, I can't quite get it to come out, so. This is like a linen finish you get on a playing card in a rule book, and it feels plasticized, like this would be hard to rip. I dig that. Good job on that, Jamie, I like that. Um, one of the things I have to say is I love this, you get to see all the components, but it looks like lots of pictures and examples of play, which I do appreciate. Don't know the game off the top of my head, but it looks cool. Lots of examples. And a little bio at the end. Then we have Tapestry Atom Automa, which are the solo rules for Tapestry. Oh no, it's weirder, it's only on the cover. The linen finish is only on the cover, it's not on the inside. We have the solo rules, which don't look quite as engaging, but sure. Appreciate solo game rules nowadays. Then we have Civilization Adjustments. So from what I understand, when the game was first published, there were some balance issues. Jamie then published some Civilization Adjustments to make the game a little more balanced and fair. And it's cool to see that it's included in this box. I was expecting to have to go to Board Game Geek and find this. So that's cool. Then we have Shadow Empire Variant. Well, there's one way to make your rulebook cheaper, is to just throw stuff all over the place. So this also says Atoma Factory, so I'm guessing it's for the solo version. And then, yes, this is, this, I, I love it because I like having player handouts. So we have summaries here of all the stuff, and there are two copies. I always do find it weird they don't include five copies, but you know what, after people learn the game, you probably don't need these more than, more than a couple. So you put one on each corner of the table. Looks cool. Some massive cards. Wow, those are large cards. I have to assume these are the tapestry cards that also have that same finish. No, this is even different. These like, they almost feel like sandpaper. So here we have entertainers. And we'll get that down here. I, again, having not played the game, I don't know what all those icons at the bottom mean, but they're also very different on the next card, which says Architects, which has its own list of stuff. Then we have Craftsmen, which are partially see-through because of my green thing. Alchemists, and so on. We have a ton of these cards. We'll move these out of the way. We have a ton of these cards, a whole bunch of them. I gotta say, for a Civ game, I dig the art. There's a, a really distinct art style here that sticks out. I like it. 
Obviously, these are all asymmetric in some way, probably which civilization you're playing. Looks cool. What I haven't done is, yeah, the backs are just kind of boring. We're just going to toss those in the box for now. I'm not going to bother rebagging them just so you don't have to watch me do it. Then we have the board, which is shrink wrapped. Oh, that is heavy. Oh, because there's way more than the board here. So all of the cardboard punch outs and everything are shrink wrapped. Interesting. We're going to put this aside just for a second. Baggies, thank you. Appreciate any company that gives me baggies and a way to organize my bits. Speaking of ways to organize my bits, look at this. Then we have packs of cards. Again, I'll get to those in a second. We have two nice packs of cards. Then we have some unique dice. We got D6 and a D12. Again, I'll get to that. And then check out this tray for organization that comes with the game. Obviously didn't do well in transport. So it looks like this is going to be a game you're going to want to store um, horizontally, not vertically, without having stuff fall out. Again, I'll get to all this in a minute. I want to get through these things the order I found them. So we're going to move back to this package with game boards and stuff. Wow, everything's got that texture. I dig it. I'm wondering if it's so the stuff doesn't slide. All right, so we have, um, from what I understand, different islands that you set up on that makes the game asymmetric so that everyone's playing on a different terrain type. Uh, wetland I can show off, so I'll hold this one down here so you can kind of see it. These are spots you're going to build your buildings on. That's about all I know. Tropical, desert, forest, grassland, and so on. Looks like the dots are on water. Then we have color-coded, I have to assume, player. These are technology board. No, this is not color-coded. So we have a technology board. This looks like it's going to fit those buildings. Then we have individual player boards that look all identical. Yep. Everything's got that coating. You can hear it when I move these things. Like I said, it feels like a low-grit sandpaper. So a whole bunch of these, lots of icons. Stayed my game with lots of icons. Tell me it ain't so. Then we have, I have to assume this is some kind of central player board that says normal or hard. So we obviously have two different game modes. Very cool. Then we get into, you know what, I'm gonna put all this under here. And take these out. Sorry, I'm just rearranging a little bit. Okay, then we have punch boards. Bunch of hexes. We're gonna punch one just to Oh yeah, really well punched, nice, easy to punch. So you've got these that don't show up because it's uh, in blue. So we have some sci-fi looking pieces. We got a bunch of hex tiles, which unfortunately are the same color as my green screen. So we'll use this camera to show those off. Three punch boards, not bad. And then the uniquely rounded board that I think is very aesthetically pleasing. This I've seen many times in pictures first time in person um not sure what i'm going to do for zooming out here so i can actually show this off so you have the board here so there you have it we got lots of other stuff in the picture right here but you have the board here with the different player colors no it's different it's technology military science and exploration so those are your various tracks and the board is two-sided um looks smaller on this side yeah so i'm gonna guess that's based on player count so here you have the board for tapestry, nice looking board. Again, lots of icons. Uh, it's got a very Ian and tool look, though I don't know if he designed this one. All right, next, I'm gonna crack these open, the dice. I like D12s, more games should use D12s. And I see mushrooms, I don't know what that means. So we have three different dice, including a D12, with all kinds of different symbols on it, some repeated. Uh, looks like these are the different tracks. So these are the different things you are trying to advance in with your civilization. Then you got a black die with a question mark, a mushroom, another question mark, a bag of gold. Uh, I don't know if that's a meeple or an electric plug and a star. Then you have a red die that looks like victory point die. So you got like a hex and then a bunch of numbers surrounded by laurels. They're nice. They're etched rather deeply. I don't know if you can quite see that. So you don't have to worry about the paint rubbing off on these. Even this one, it's all etched. That's awesome to see. Then we get into some cards. All right, so came with two stacks of cards. We're going to sort through these quickly because I got a whole bunch that are orange. 
orange cards, white background cards, uh, people or something, yeah, people cards or other stuff. Summary cards, it looks like, yep. And I have no idea, maybe end game scoring cards. These, so we're gonna start with this pile because it's closest to me. So these, I have no idea what that means. Oh, we do have some other stuff here. So this is what these cards look like. And they have that symbol on the back. I honestly, having not played the game, I will say uh, it looks language independent. So no actual writing on these cards, nothing in another language. So, and they are very different. These might be, I bet you these are the Automana. Automana. Auton I can't say that word. These are for solo. That's my guess. I'm guessing these are for solo play, though I don't know for sure. But these look like the kind of thing that would tell you how your opponent acts. Then we have some summary cards. Always great to see. I love summary cards. Jamie's always been good about this with his games. So much better than looking at stuff in the rule book. Then we have, I have no idea. This also might be the solo thing. So there's like level one, level three. Um, I don't know. Little card scientists, maybe special abilities. Then we got all kinds of cool inventions like air conditioning. We love that one this year. We've got ammonia, so we have inventions, anesthesia, and I am not going to go through all of these. You've got a huge deck of these here, all featuring some really cool artwork. Nice to see what they are. Everything's got its own artwork. Whole bunch of those. Whole bunch of technologies. Very cool. Then I got what looks like, um, yeah, how to play. So it shows an income turn, an advanced turn, and then the different tracks and what they represent. So you do have a whole bunch of these for the full player count. Then we get into Academia, Age of Discovery. Maybe these are the tapestry cards. Age of Sail. Age of Wonders, and again, I'm going to stop there and just show off. We have a ton of cards. Again, dig the artwork. Very easy to see. These are language dependent, so if you get this game not in English, they would be in another language. Whole bunch of those. And that's it. That's everything you get in the box. Oh, wait. No. Wait. We forgot about all of this stuff. All right. Let's dive into the interesting looking stuff here. Hopefully there's somewhere to put these cards once I open this up. Oh, I am already impressed by one thing I see in here. Well, many things, to be honest. So, so first off, this all comes out and has a nice tray to sort it. Though, as you can tell, some of the stuff has fallen out during transit. Oh, it's taped. Okay, we'll quickly untape that. And we'll just open it up that way. So you have some of the coolest. I have no idea if these are supposed to be in a certain order, but that doesn't fit there. Does, this, does something fit there? Maybe this fell out of there. No, it's super tall. <laughs> I don't know where this goes. This is flatter, yeah, okay. Maybe that first one does go in there because it's tall. Some way that I can't figure out. So this is the problem with it showing up all messed up. Oh, wait, wait, this. There we go. Does this fit there? Here, we put this tall one here. Maybe. There, those look like they fit. <laughs> now we'll put these, we'll flip this. Alright, so we have all this stuff. We're going to start with this one. So these are actual three-dimensional... Um, feels like resin pre-painted buildings that you would stand on your thing. So like check that out That is just one of the coolest board game components. I'm gonna show off each of these in turn I don't know exactly what each of them represent, but just look at that. That is just so cool They've got some heft to them. They're not light cheap feeling Rocket ship I want the rocket ship anytime I play tapestry I'm gonna do whatever I can to get the rocket ship and then some kind of energy looks like a Tesla tower. Like this beats minis to me. Well, they are minis, I guess. And look at the chunky, like big chunky thing this is. Look at that. So cool. 
All right, I think I may stop. And then you got some fatter, long, longer buildings that, oh, oops, blue. Don't use blue. And a barn, because you know, it's not all high tech. And what looks like possibly a schoolhouse of some sort. Some kind of warehouse or factory. House, house. No, it's got a clock on the tower, clock tower. And we're getting a little smaller. Then we got an L-shaped one here. But check these out. These are just so fantastic looking. Look at that little house. It's awesome. Another little house. More little houses. Are these the same? Or are they unique? No, they're all unique. See, that's even cooler. Even these little tiny ones. This one's got a huge smokestack on the top. There's the house I want. I want this and the rocket. Some kind of tower house. And it looks like a lighthouse. Yeah, that, that would be a lighthouse. Very cool. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Even the, the cubes and stuff look cooler than just cubes. So next we have little baggies. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see a good way to organize these once I've got them open. So this is going to be a mess. I'm going to hate myself later. And I'm going to go back to the exacto. All right. So this at first I thought was just a bunch of white cubes, but if you look, there's little standy things in here as well. What I'm going to do is just dump all of them in here. Like I said, I'm going to hate myself later. So you have cubes, but you also have, I keep wanting, it kind of looks like a TARDIS. I doubt that's what it's supposed to be. You have this little thing, which I know nothing about the game, a gazebo, a TARDIS, whatever it is. So you have that in multiple player colors. I'm not, oh, blue. <laughs> you have white, blue, bright yellow, red, and green. And it looks like the red and the green are different enough for color find friendliness. So again, we got red and green. So cubes and little tower things. Then we've got what looks like resource trackers. There's mushrooms again. The production on this is over the top. Like. These are not wood, they're plastic. And now I've got all these resource looking things. These are the things that were on that one die. That's all I know now. So different types, we've got a star. Jamie likes his stars. Almost all his games feature stars. You've got bag of gold, probably for tracking some kind of money. Stars for victory points, mushrooms, which may represent food, I'm guessing, but I don't know. And then I, I'm still thinking this is a plug, like you plug something in, but I could be totally wrong, maybe something for power. So you've got those, and they're five of each, so I'm guessing these are for tracking things on the player boards. I'm going to put all those in here, loose, and again, I'm going to hate myself. Then we've got houses in four different colors. Are these all the same? We will find out. Lots of stuff in this game. Looks like they may all be identical, but different from each other. So these are cute little houses, cute little gray house. They are all identical, so I'll just show you off the one. Cute little gray house and a whole baggie full of them. And then if this is the exact same shape, it looks like it is. No, so they do look different. So I will show off each different color because they are all different. So then we have a brown little house, like a log cabin style house and a baggie full of those damn it cut 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 red round hoses i'm getting a, a little pig's vibe all of a sudden three little pigs and this one was made of brick Oh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe these are different. Um, so maybe you have like straw, wood, brick, and stone. That actually it would make sense, wouldn't it? Because these look like they have thatched roofs. That might be it. Or I could be way off. So I didn't do the thing I said I was going to do and like watch how to play videos before doing unboxings. I completely forgot that I said I was going to do that. So here you go. Little hoses. Four different colors. And I think we're at the end of the rainbow. I think that's everything. 
I am not looking forward to putting this away <laughs> and trying to figure out what goes where later. Okay, dice are going to go in here. These, unfortunately, if they're open, we'd be good. Put those there. This I'm going to hate myself for later. Stack of cards, whole bunch of cards. Punch boards, everything else. Take all this out. All this out. All this out. And that out. Now I need the thing on the bottom. That was easier than I thought it was going to be. And then we're going to put it all back. I want the instructions on top because I want to run how to play this game. Everything else, though, is just going to go in loose until I come up with a better solution. It's nice there's some nice big bags, probably even that could fit those. Can't put it on top of there. That would do terrible things for our video. Here, we'll just toss that in there for now. This is kind of what I wanted next. And then these. And then this. But where do I put the cards? The cards aren't even in here. How did they fit in here before? How did they fit these cards in here? Oh, this is the lid? Great. Sorry later, Mo. Tapestry. So there you have it. Everything you get in the box for Tapestry from Stonemaier Games. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. I, I am shocked that this game has a four-page rulebook and has that much variety of stuff in this box. Not only are they awesome 18 fully painted resin buildings, but like the, the there's there's a couple cubes, but like everything's shaped. Like the, the tokens are stars and mushroom shaped and the various types of buildings are in different I'm, I'm assuming building materials are in different colors and the cards look fantastic and everything's got this really nice textured finish so nothing slides around i am kind of blown away so great job there jamie stamer haven't played the game and i'm already extremely impressed like i would say at this point this game is worth the money it costs just for the components and i've heard the game's good so i'm looking forward to trying that out so that was tapestry from stonemeyer games fantastic production quality i think mechs versus minions finally has a run for its money so that's it for my look at tapestry i am mo Tuzano, the tabletop bellhop your cardboard concierge find me all over the internet as tabletop bellhop one word and go to our website tabletopbellhop.com for some fantastic gaming content our main goal is to answer your gaming and game night questions so if you've got a question for me just head over to that but uh yeah, just head over to that website click on ask the bellhop or fire me off an email at questions at tabletopbellhop.com. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click on the eye that shows up up in the corner there. That'll have a link to our Patreon where you can tip your bellhop. Thank you for joining me. Good night and game on.